Welcome to Books and Bitcoin, Episode 2. I'm your host, Dylan Viola. Today, I sat down with Mr. Herb. Mr. Herb has a fascinating blog on early retirement and how Bitcoin plays a role in retirement planning. Without further ado, here's our interview. All right, this is Episode 2 of Books and Bitcoin with Dylan. And uh, today we're joined with Mr. Herb, whose uh, blog is called Early Retirement BTC. Herb, how you doing? Thanks, Dylan. All good here. It's a uh, rainy housing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I I got to know what. Uh, so, what inspired the blog? What uh, what got you started? Yeah. So, it I I got to say it was the early retirement sphere or the the. Uh, community and i was i was into into this early retirement stuff before i uh, even found bitcoin so i was reading the blogs like mr money mustache who basically writes about how you can save in your everyday life and how you can invest it how much it's gonna uh rise in value with the compound interest and when uh, when are you going to be in a situation where you can basically live off your interest and just keep growing the nest egg or something like that? So I was reading those, and then there's this one Finnish blog actually also, which I I found, and he was keeping track on his fiat investments, and he was do, doing the regular early retirement stuff with the stocks. And every month he would post, uh, he would post a kind of collection of all his fiat investments and total value and how it's developing and what is his target. So I basically just combined those two. I I got really into Bitcoin at some point, and I I found the early retirement stuff interesting, and I thought that I have a really good chance. Uh, hitting that goal with Bitcoin, the strict investment plan. And I just wanted to play it out to everybody uh, who's interested in, in, in this stuff so that they can follow uh, how it's developing month after month. It's a slow progress at times, but over time it compounds. And then I, I was very confident from the very beginning that at some point I'm going to be uh, with a very nice stack and a very very nice fiat value at the end. But it's, it's no use telling everybody what you did when it's already done. So you gotta got to start before the actual goal is hit. I love it, dude. I love it because... Uh... One of the first things I've seen, I guess it was, I think it was documenting Bitcoin that shared your post and it kind of went yeah. viral. And then I went and looked at it and I was like, this dude, look at these <laughs> charts, look at these like overlays. I mean, it really is like a beautiful little graphic when you first just look at, I guess it's your most recent, uh, I guess that was your May post, maybe it was April, where you can see all those charts. And uh, I was yeah. like, I wish I would have done that from the beginning because I honestly have no idea what I've bought. Like, I just, I know what I have. I don't know if my cost basis, I don't even know if I'm up or down. I just always buy more. <laughs> it's just, yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. But um, the, the thing I wanted to touch on was just like going back to the very first post, your very first blog. It's um, reflections of 2017 to 2020. And mm. I kind of want to know where you were like, 2017 what what were you like listening to how did you hear about bitcoin how did you get into it and then how did you continue to learn not to just like sell when you made a hundred dollars you know fiat profit yeah. yeah so i first heard i was working a different job back then and we had a team meeting and then one a co-worker basically gave us all a presentation about the blockchain <laughs> you know so he was talking about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic, and he showed us some price charts. And uh, I just remember seeing the Bitcoin price at 2,000 euros, thinking I was 
too late and I just hope that I have found this thing when it was a thousand euros or something like that. <laughs> so I could have made an easy 100% or something. But and so I, I was totally only interested in it price wise at that point. And uh, I was already into the early retirement sphere. So I was kind of greedy when I uh, looked into Bitcoin more after that mm, team meeting at work. And then I found some crazy price predictions, uh, like 30,000 by next year and 100,000 by next year by some people or some uh, random news articles. And I just thought that I can make a lot of money with Bitcoin. And uh, <laughs> like we all do, maybe mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah. But then it was actually the Andreas and Tan Paul's videos that got me uh, going deeper because I think that was the first time that I understood that there's something more to Bitcoin than just the price. And it's actually important uh, for humanity, not, not just for making, making some quick bucks. Dude, so I, that was the, yeah, that was definitely the gateway. Um, yeah, dude, I really have to go down the uh, Antonopoulos, I don't even know how to pronounce it, rabbit hole. Like, I think I've seen a video or two, but I've heard so many people talk about him. Like, like he's a legend in the space. And somehow I've just never worked my way down and like just yeah. went back and watched everything. Uh, it sounds like a really interesting guy who brought a really like fresh perspective back then that wasn't really... I guess talked about too much. I guess it was more like a libertarian uh Austrian economics kind of point of view where a lot of people were just in it for the money back then. Yeah. And back then there wasn't so many resources anyway. So I think he was one of the best at that time. But nowadays I, I wouldn't actually maybe recommend it uh among the first ones because there are so many, so many other good resources right now. But and also, also I, I don't like the way he continues to push some altcoin narratives even uh, at this moment, and many many other opinions of his I don't I don't agree with anymore. But he was for for sure the, the valuable resources at the start of my journey. So yeah, I recommend everybody to check him. But just understand that the rabbit hole goes much deeper so <laughs> andreas <laughs> is not the, not the one or or in a way special to any in relation to anybody else yeah i kind of so, so that was just the first one yeah yeah i kind of get the feeling he got canceled uh i didn't know i didn't know why um, <laughs> yeah yeah maybe it's yeah. still but it's the guy I, I think so but after that uh i i think i need to mention trace mayer i think he's He's, uh, he was a super good resource. And I, I watched many videos, Trey's talking about the seven network effects of Bitcoin. And he was the first one who mentioned a uh, $1 million Bitcoin price at some random podcast. And that kind of blew my mind. I, I didn't think that would be possible before, but after Trey's mentioned it out loud, it's, it, it became like a, possible future and looking at it right now i think it's only uh, inevitable that it's gonna hit that price and go beyond so trace was good but then he disappeared i don't know what happened <laughs> do you know trace Mayer? no so i was gonna say i find this very interesting that uh so far you brought up trace Mayer and andreas and these are two people I've actually really never listened to. Like I've listened to Breed Love or Red Breed Love. I've listened to yeah. Preston Fish, you know, and yeah. then a lot of the, the present day people. Um, mm. but I remember back in like 2017, when I first heard about Bitcoin, it was like, I don't know, in passing, some random person said something. Yeah. I, you know, I go to Coinbase, I try to buy it. And I was like, I don't trust this shady internet website. Like, what's mm. going on? So I try to use a credit card and they're like, no, dude. You gotta use debit. I was like, okay. Well, I guess I'm just not buying Bitcoin. And it was like twenty eight hundred US dollars. It, oh, went, wow. it went on to go to like twenty and then come back down to nine. And I just missed the whole thing. And then I remember that's 
like, I guess I got in around 2019 when it was 9,000 and I was just listening to uh, Preston Pish on the investors podcast. Yeah. Somehow I feel like uh, Preston got into the scene right at the moment where Trace went out or went quiet. So we got to switch over there, <laughs> but they, they are similar kind of guys. So I think you, you would find Trace Mayer's uh, content very interesting. If you like Preston and Preston is good. I like Preston too. I love Preston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, awesome. I'm definitely going to go back and listen to Trace. It's cool. Cause you're like a whole like generation before me. Like you just have this whole another perspective from a, <laughs> a forgotten past essentially. Yeah. Yeah. There are the cycles. And, and I feel the same way with somebody uh, when somebody is talking about the 2013 cycle, for example, like I have no idea what they were listening back then or if there even was any Bitcoin resources. I think there was this, what's it called? Some, where, where chat, do you know Jan said? I think he had a podcast, some kind of Bitcoin podcast where they were dissing all coins. And they were like the, the best, best resource back then. But that's like ancient history to me and I haven't experienced that. I know this, Andreas and Trace Mayer, and maybe the Noted would also, was also big in 2017, 2018. And you are, or, or I don't know, if you identify as the 2020 <laughs> group yeah. or, or, or what. Might as well. Yeah. So you have the new Breed Labs. Yeah. So he's relatively new and Preston also. Yeah. Uh, so and Michael okay. Saylor. Yeah. Back in 2017, when you got into it and you were, you know, building your conviction and doing your research, you had Trace, you had Andreas. Did y'all have like, were there some like notice notable books back then that you would have read that kind of built your conviction and kept you in, you know? Mm, not really. The, the first book I, I read was uh, Mastering Bitcoin by Andreas. So, so yeah, that was, but that came later. I, I'd say I started with the Andreas YouTube videos, Trace Mayer YouTube videos, then the early podcasts, like Noted mm -hmm. by Vera Sharp and uh, Bitstein, then Tales from the Crypt. Mm -hmm. I've listened from the very, very first episode. That's awesome, dude. I, I've listened <laughs> to a few. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think if you were to pull it up, it's like, episode count 2500 or whatever i'm not even sure <laughs> yeah uh, and there was one weird one uh where andreas was one of the co-hosts i can't remember anything anymore it has bitcoin of course in the name but those i don't i don't uh, i think those guys are so good anymore because we have we have so good content nowadays so the, the least important ones keeps dropping and then you stay with the, the best ones. <laughs> so yeah, maybe you should just try to search everything and listen to them. And you will curate your own content. So, so. Will do. All right. Yeah. But, but, uh, but the books, uh, yeah, Bitcoin Standard by Safe. Oh, I think yeah. It came out, maybe 2018. So that that's an uh, awesome book. That's gold right there. That's uh, I gave that to my dad. Uh, I have, so I have it on Audible. I guess on Audible, you can kind of just like send books to people. So I send it to him. I send it to my mom. I send it to my sister. I send okay. it to workers. I just, I, I just send it all the time. Uh, that's a, that's a great book. That yeah. was like, that's what opened up my eyes. Like, I mean, I listened to Preston, but when I like read that and then listened to it, I was like, this is, this is a game changer. Yeah. It's going to change the world. Yeah. And I had uh, seen many quotes about the book before I read it. So I, I thought I knew already everything about the content. Like, okay, I know what this book is about. And yeah, maybe I don't need to read it, but I'm just going to order it for support. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was why I bought it. But yeah, it was, it's really good content and uh, you learn a lot by reading it. And also, uh, you, you kind of think you know enough about Bitcoin at every point of the way, but even 
even uh, when I had been in, into Bitcoin for one year or something and I read the book, I probably didn't understand too much and I should read the book again <laughs> right now and maybe understand more about the book. And that's yeah. the thing, dude. It's like the rabbit hole just keeps on going. And then yeah. there's some books. It's like, this is not even a Bitcoin book. But it's a Bitcoin book. Like if yeah, you, but it's about Bitcoin. Yeah. When money dies or the fourth turning, like they're written 20, 30 years before Bitcoin was even created. And yet they're just like right on the money. Like it yeah. is a Bitcoin book. I just I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And Matrix movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> Be for Vendetta. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Everything is about Bitcoin. It's uh universal idea <laughs> that's my girlfriend she's always like will you just shut up about bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah whatever's the topic yeah this very much about bitcoin <laughs> yeah i feel like a vegan <laughs> if i told you guys i'm a vegan you know <laughs> oh man all right herb let's get into the uh the confessions the altcoin fashions mm. <laughs> so walk, us down, walk us down your path with altcoins yeah so i think it was the well everybody gets interested about the altcoins because you want more gains but uh during that time when i started in 2017 uh, we had the i'd say b cash attack against bitcoin because roger Ver's website bitcoin.com all of a sudden started to refer uh, to be cash is the real Bitcoin. There was a huge confusion, at least among noobs <laughs> like me, about what's going on. And uh, they tried to make the hard fork to Secret 2x, which uh, failed spectacularly. But anyway, the B cash stock was ongoing, and there was a huge crash in Bitcoin price coincided with huge pump in the Bcash price and huge drain on the Bitcoin hash rate, coinciding with huge gain of the Bcash hash rate. So it was really a scary moment, actually, to, to watch as a relatively new Bitcoiner. I, I'd been in the, into the scene only like one or two months at that point. And I was seeing my uh, coin's value getting slaughtered <laughs> and another coin pumping. So while I did not panic sell at that point, uh, probably because I also was away yeah. at the countryside, so I couldn't. But but I was I was wondering more that this would have would have been a great opportunity to sell my Bitcoin for this uh, altcoin or this other coin, which is pumping. And then I should have just sold uh, that one at the top to get more Bitcoin, uh, as it would have been that easy with the crystal ball. But <laughs> anyway, that's what the greedy me th thought. And uh, it was the general bull market at that point. So we had every altcoin pumping uh, next to me. So there was like shitcoin after shitcoin, Stellar, Ripple, you name it, whatever. And it, it seemed like a uh, like, a, uh, like an obvious opportunity to get more Bitcoin, to buy some altcoins. So I did. I put some some uh, percentage of my portfolio into these weird altcoins. And I was in, in the Reddit cryptocurrency to watching what's the hot new one. And uh, I got some... Uh, immense gains with some uh, random coins but only on paper because that's uh, another thing with altcoins that when you when you hit a successful altcoin you you don't want to sell too early because if it's keep, if it keeps pumping 10x the price and you sell at only 2x or something you're going to feel really stupid and you might even buy back at the top so you just keep holding it and uh, hoping it will keep pumping 
And also, I didn't understand that all the altcoins are scams. So I, I, I didn't expect it to come down <laughs> at any point. I was basically thinking that I'm in this new revolution, this blockchain revolution, where uh, I have just found these gems early. And instead of cashing out right now to get the Bitcoin gains, uh, gains I just hold on to these altcoins for like many years to watch them mature and uh, go into the market, and the real world. And I will be like one of the early early seed investors in a big company or something like that. Mm-hmm. So then it, it came as a total surprise <laughs> when, when these altcoins crashed and all my gains drained away. <laughs> and somehow uh, when I was still on, because I, I think the, the main or the one coin would get, which gave me the most gains was this one called COSS. Crypto one-stop solution, which doesn't even exist anymore. It's like such a shit going with such a low volume, but on paper I got like forty x or something Jeez. with that in, in Bitcoin terms. Ah, yeah. uh, no, no, that was still perfect. But anyway, uh, I didn't sell, and I watched it come down, and then it hit me the reality that this is all just just wait for where and uh, delusional. Uh, stuff that people people are losing their their actual savings. So I I hit the hit the moment when I was back to my own own more or less, and then I sold every altcoin I had and put it into into Bitcoin, and uh, that that was the moment where I became a Bitcoin maximalist, so to say, and uh, for, forgetting about every altcoin ever. Uh, from now on, uh, just concentrating on Bitcoin. Me too, buddy. Yeah. I, you know, I, I did the I did the altcoin, I did the shitcoin, and however you want to refer to it. And, uh, you know, I got lucky. Like, I never had to learn the lesson the hard way. I started buying, like, Bitcoin on Robinhood whenever I finally did <laughs> buy it, which is essentially a shitcoin in itself. You know, it's just a yeah. IFU. But then I also bought some Doge and I bought some Ethereum and I mean they were all so cheap back then. And then uh, you know I didn't I didn't know I was just kind of just essentially I was just gambling. Like I didn't even know enough yeah. about Bitcoin. I was just buying it because. And uh, yeah. eventually I sold them all and then just put those positions in Bitcoin and and maybe I made you know I think I might have three x Ethereum, but I only had like five hundred bucks worth or something. And then uh, the Doge was 0.00005 <laughs> cents at the time or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was people like you and uh, just like every resource out there talking about these shit coins. Like, hey, they're pumping dumps, they're rug pulls, they're, mm-hmm. you know, they're this, they're that. And I was like, well, if everyone's saying it, <laughs> yeah. where there's smoke, there's fire. And I was like, I don't hear anybody saying that about Bitcoin. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to go all in. And uh, yep. I haven't looked back. So thank you. <laughs> thank you yeah. for, for going through no those problems. <laughs> man, I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. But sometimes people need to experience their own, own losses to learn a lesson. I have many friends or some friends that I have uh, somewhat successfully gotten into, into Bitcoin, but then they go into the altcoin, altcoin route and no matter what I tell them, they, they think that they know better and they should uh, diversify and <laughs> get some more upside from these altcoins. That, that dude, that's they exactly. get burned. Yeah. <laughs> this, so two of the guys that in my life, like my buddies, that have like orange pilled successfully, I yeah. still can't even get them to sell their Ethereum. Like they're like, yeah, I got, I'm mostly Bitcoin, but you know, I got some <laughs> Ethereum. I'm like, yeah. Well, but it's know, only a matter I, of time. I do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a matter, a matter of, time. of time. Either it goes to zero on its own, naturally, you know, then they sell it. So they're going to be maxes one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day or another, you get it at the price you deserve. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good segue into your post on how to lose your Bitcoin. Speaking on trading, all coins, leverage longs. Let's, uh, let's just dig into that. Let's... uh. 
yeah dive in mm. so i was just uh i don't even know it's a relatively new post a few months ago and uh i i was trying to get the complete resource because you you always have these uh these these how do you say self-help books what to do uh, to to be successful and also in, in bitcoin bitcoin security you have some kind of guides how to store your bitcoin and uh, what what to do to be successful or, or something so i i wanted to make a complete guide what what you should not do so then it's it's in a way actionable because you can just avoid every mistake and then you should be golden but that it's meant to be a post that I keep updating and maybe in the future, one year from now or someday, I will actually have every bad decision <laughs> imaginable. And if you are able to avoid all of those, then you will be successful with your Bitcoin. But yeah. <laughs> I also understand it's not possible, but I tried to uh, put some some into there, some of the most common or some, some of the things on my mind that you could do and um, they are not uh, wise things to do, so you should avoid these. Yeah. So, so when I was reading it, I was like, "This is a pretty good list." It was, you know, trading. I don't want to go through the whole blog and not send people there. But one thing I think I would add is yeah. the making sure there's not a lack of education, or you know, making sure you get your education. Because I always think of uh, maybe it's a parable, and it's just like uh, a story in the Bible or something. It's like a fool and his money are easily parted. Yeah, yeah, that's without, a good point. Without education, you're you're gonna eventually do something stupid. But uh, I mean, your blog yeah. is is an education resource, so if they're there, yeah, it's one way, one way, a second way to the education athlete. Let me yeah, see. That's a good one because I I have a friend who who's maybe he's the closest Bitcoin holder I have in a way because I don't really have too many friends uh, in my fiat fiat circles <laughs> who are interested in Bitcoin or holding Bitcoin. But there's this one guy who is holding relatively successfully, but he's not interested at all to learn about it. Like he doesn't uh, listen to any Bitcoin podcasts or read any Bitcoin books or even talk too much to me about Bitcoin. I don't actually know why he's, <laughs> why he's holding. Maybe he's only in it for the money. But... But yeah, it would definitely do good for him to learn about it. And it would do good for anybody to learn about it. And I'm just always uh, fearing for him that, okay, someday he's going to do something stupid because he hasn't put in the work. But so far, so good. Let's see <laughs> how it goes with him. Yeah, some of my buddies. Uh, I'm just like their go-to resource. Hey, what about this? What about that? What What's the, what's the price action doing? I'm like, I don't know. I just, I just buy more. They'll text me. You think now's a good time to buy? I'm like, 50 50, you know, could go up, could, could go down. <laughs> yeah. It's a long term thing, dude. I don't care. It could go to $5,000 tomorrow. I would probably just take out a personal loan to buy as much as I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's touch on your post moon math because that is. I think it's probably something everybody struggles with. They always say, man, I missed the boat. I'm too late. What if I had got in sooner? Because this is a, like a very interesting perspective to look at. So if you want to kind of just like talk us through what the process of that blog post and what like your thought process was. Yeah. So I think I started writing that because uh, sometime, it, I think it was written in 2020, late 2020 and I had around three Bitcoin at that point. My portfolio was around maybe 30K. And I thought that when I started 30K would have bought me around 30 Bitcoin or something, uh, 10 Bitcoin or something like that. So that felt like a huge number. And then I just started wondering that, that okay, uh, how much would I have if I started buying Bitcoin earlier? And of course, this is 
also something that everybody thinks. Because I remember hearing some early podcasts from uh, maybe Dan, I don't know if it, if it was Dan Held or somebody who bought their first Bitcoin at $200 and even they were thinking they were late. So everybody thinks they're late. And I for sure thought I was late in 2017. So I've been at that point, 2020, I had been buying for three years, more or less, 36 months or something. And I thought that, okay, what if I had started buying? Uh, so yeah, I, I'll go back uh, to say that I started buying two months before the all-time high of 2017. So that was my point in time reference. And then I thought, what if I had started buying two months before the all-time high of 2013 with the similar plan? So I, I put the information in my spreadsheet. So similar via purchases and checked the prices, historical prices, and worked out that if I had started uh, stacking a similar plan basically four years earlier, I would have 60 something Bitcoin. And yeah, that's a shitload, shitload of Bitcoin and a huge amount. But, but also at the end of that stacking, those 60 Bitcoin uh, would have been worth around 30K dollars or euros, around the same that I, my uh, situation back then was. So that was. Kind of fun, fun to realize that uh, even though I had found, or if I f- had found Bitcoin four years earlier, and I had done the, the exact same thing of con, con, uh, buying with conviction for three years, I, I would still only have uh, only this thirty k dollars or euros. So it, it doesn't uh, sound like a big amount. But 60 Bitcoin does sound like a big amount. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's retired. because we are in the future. Yeah. And we but I, I think you can, yeah, but you can use that same mindset like today at this moment. Like you, you might look at my blog and say that four Bitcoin is, is a huge amount that I'm never going to be able to get and just leave it or feel disencouraged. But I could have felt that way with 60 Bitcoin and do nothing because I realized I'm never going to get 60. So here I am at four and I'm happy. So <laughs> you could always think that if you start now and stack for four years, you might end up in a similar situation that I am right now. And even though you will not have four Bitcoin, probably you will have uh, the same fee at amount in four mm. years. So the, the journey might be very close to mine or to the ones who started stacking in 2013 and and so on and so on. So in any way, you need to uh, take your time stacking. There's no, there's no shortcuts. That That's is basically so, the message. You know, uh, you know what I freaking love? I love at the end of all your blog posts, they're all kind of slightly different. And it's like some are cut cost stack sats. <laughs> yeah. Stack sats, stack sats. Um, mm. don't eat seed oils, or you know, there's always like a little different message. And I think that's that's pretty great <laughs> because they're little clever nuggets. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm writing now now basically only once per month. So even though I'm sometimes I I it was in a way a motto or brand, <laughs> cut costs, stack sets or something. So I tried to keep it similar, but it changes month after month, <laughs> somehow develops. Yeah. And in one of your blog posts, I don't even remember which one, I just wrote this little note that says, I don't believe in get rich quick. I believe in get rich slowly. And I mean, if that's not the freaking motto of Bitcoin, just keep grinding. I yeah. love it. Yeah, right. there's always no get rich quick in Bitcoin. Somebody said it's a, it's like winning lottery in slow motion. 
But that <laughs> that hit me. <laughs> I love that. that. That was profound. Yeah, <laughs> winning the lottery in slow motion. Yeah, but it's all, also it. Uh, I think it deflects your your self image or your how you view yourself uh, among others or something like that. Because if I'm with somebody right now who who has fiat riches or is very successful in his fiat life, I I maybe used to feel inferior and kind of uh, nervous or, or shy in that kind of company. But right now, I feel like I'm the richest guy in the room because I already have the Bitcoin. And it's only a matter of time uh, before, I don't know if this sounds stupid, but but it's only a matter of time before I'm at, at maybe higher level or, or somehow I'm, I'm already living in the future and these guys don't know the future yet. So it has given me a lot of confidence in a way. To have I, know, I know that feeling. That's what I think yeah. every day. I was like, I just need a, a few more years and I'm <laughs> free, free as a bird. <laughs> I just got to, yeah. I got to wait for the future to catch up with my, uh, my thesis. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, Herb, uh, Mr. Herb, if you want to give them a little handoff and let them know where they can reach you and where they can find your blog. Yeah. So um, my Twitter handle is Bitster Stacker. Uh, no, it used to be. No, no, it's not bullshit. It's Retire Early BTC. Yeah, I've changed it. The website is er hyphen by bitcoin.com so we are from early retirement that's a god awful domain name <laughs> yeah i think it gets the point across i think yeah. it's uh, pretty straightforward i mean you're on the books and bitcoin podcast <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please leave a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're using. And you can find me on Twitter at Dylan21Million. And that's the numbers 2-1. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day.